So you experienced a little bit of burnout. Well, let's talk about five ways that you can kind of break that slump and kind of prevent yourself from ever feeling reader's burnout. Let's get into it. everyone welcome back to the channel thank you for watching thank you for being here if this is your first time here make sure you like this video share it with your friends subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell so you don't miss when a single video comes out and today we are talking about readers burnout if you watched my march tbr video you saw that in february i experienced some burnout so we're going to talk about how does that come about and what are some things that you can do to counteract, to get on top of it before it even starts so that you don't get into these big reading slumps where you dose, don't read anything. I'm going to give you five tips that I think are useful, that help me, and that I think will help you if you start feeling yourself kind of like when you pick up a book, you're just not that excited to get into it. And so how does burnout start? Where does it come from? Why does it happen? And then what happened to me? For me, when I was planning out my February, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to read. You know, I made that big stack of like Beowulf and the Odyssey and the Iliad and like all these things that I wanted to read. And I do like truly want to read those. But when I like sat down and like picked it up, like I start reading through Beowulf and it's a little more challenging than I had like originally anticipated. So it was taking me a little bit longer getting the videos about like the historical context for Beowulf was taking me a little bit longer than I anticipated. And I kind of just like, I just got in my own way where I just was reading because I felt like I had to, not because I wanted to. And that is 100% a feeling that I always want to avoid because it is the main reason that I stopped reading in the first place because it started feeling like this was something I had to do, not something that I wanted to do. So I would like to encourage you that if you start feeling that way, like, Maybe you do need to take a break. Maybe you do need to step aside for a little bit. That's not one of the tips, but like it is a very real thing. Like you can love reading. You can have too much of something that you love. And it is okay to accept that like, well, maybe I need to take a, like a break from this. Maybe I need to take a step back. And maybe I don't need to be like reading as much. Or I just need, you know, I need something different. And if you feel like you want to keep reading, but you need that something different... That's what this video is for. Now, I love fantasy. I love long-running series. I love comics. Like These are all things that have like these very long-running things like that for you to dive into. But sometimes like that can be a little much. And so my first tip, which is very just kind of like generic, a blanket thing that you could apply to anything, not just fantasy or comics or anything like that, is to take breaks. To take breaks between these things. Like as if you saw my TBR video, you saw that we were starting the Wheel of Time and that my plan for that is to go very slow. I will be reading books concurrently with the Wheel of Time because I want that to be just a very slow thing that we just kind of chip away at and chip away at. And so that would be like my first tip is if you're tackling a big series, a long series, like don't try to read them all just back to back to back to back to back. Like you're going to get sick of it. You're going to get tired of it. And then you might put that series down and never come back to it, even though it was a series that you really loved. So take breaks, read a book of that series that you're enjoying, read something else. Uh, maybe read two books of a series that you're really enjoying and then kind of like be like, all right, I need, I need to cool it off because part of like the fun and like reading them and enjoying these books is the anticipation is like, I loved this. I can't wait to see what happens next. And when you take a little bit of a break, it encourages that. It is 100% you delaying gratification for you to be like, ah, I, can't, I cannot wait to get back to that. And so you, you read, while you're reading this book in between, you're also like you're keeping it fresh in your mind and you're thinking about it. And like you're you're excited for the next book. You're excited to be reading. And that is kind of why you should be breaking them up so that you can create – this kind of like excitement that might not exist if you're just plowing through them by giving yourself a little bit of a break between them by delaying when you start them. All you're doing is just like amping up your excitement. 
Now, the downside of that would be if you don't end up enjoying the next book in a series, you've just like really played yourself up to get let down, but that's going to happen. That's part of that is part of the game. My next tip is going to be that you need to be reading widely, right? If you find yourself like only reading fantasy books, maybe try something else, some an action adventure, maybe try historical fiction, maybe try a horror book or you know, something something else, something that is so vastly different than what you are currently reading so that it, it just kind of keeps things fresh and interesting and exciting. Find other genres that you like, other genres that you enjoy, and mix those in with like your favorite things. And that that can be anything. Like, like I love fantasy, but I also love horror. So being able to read long fantasy series but splice horror books in there, like it is the perfect balance of still being able to read things that I enjoy, but without like plowing through series so fast and then they're just over with, and then I'm done with them. But like, putting a horror book in between, well now I'm excited to read that horror book, and now I am reading that, and I don't get so burnt out on the series. I don't get so burnt out on reading Game of Thrones or reading Dresden Files. I don't get so burnt out on those. You know, that good, that switch up is kind of like what I need to keep myself from feeling like overwhelmed or from feeling that I'm moving through a series like too quickly or that I'll be done with it soon or that I'm not really enjoying this right now because it's exactly kind of the same as the last book and I just don't know if I really want to be reading in this world. Take a break. Read a different genre. Read something else. Read something that's so vastly different so that you don't like kill something that you love by just oversaturating yourself with it. Find other things that you enjoy in other genres and just kind of put those in between so you're always constantly just shaking things up. Third, and this needs to be stated, I should have made it the first point, but do not be afraid to DNF books. I used to be this way. I used to be afraid of like, Oh, I spent money on this book. I got to read the whole thing. That is nonsense. If you don't want to read something, don't read it. And I, you will particularly find that like trying to force yourself to read a book that you're not enjoying is going to create a slump faster than probably any of these other things. Because if you're reading something and you really don't like it, but you feel like because you spent the money on it that you have to get all the way through it, you won't. You won't get through it. And then you'll put the book down because you hate it so much. And then you'll just stop. You won't even pick up the next book. Like you will just stop reading. And that is what we are trying to avoid. We're trying to avoid getting to these long stretches of periods where you just aren't reading. And forcing yourself to read books you don't like is a great way to get there. I talked about this on an earlier video where like this is this is literally what high school and college does to kids where – you're forced to read all these things that you have no interest in. And so that is what you associate reading with is all these things that you don't really like or care for. And so you just you associate that with I don't like reading, but really you don't like reading the things that you were forced to read. But you probably would enjoy reading if you got to pick and had full range of anything out there that you wanted to enjoy. Don't force yourself to read books you don't like. You will find yourself in a slump. You will find yourself just like, not wanting to read, not wanting to carry on. And really, it's not that even that you don't want to be reading, you just don't want to be reading that book. So don't create this notion that you must finish a book that you start if you're really not enjoying it. My fourth tip for you would be read multiple books at a time, right? Uh, th this isn't really necessarily going to work for some people. I've been doing it since I was in college because I, I was forced to. I was an English major. I was a double major actually in English and philosophy. And so I was having to read five or six books a week. And so like I, I couldn't not be reading multiple books at the same time. But what I learned early on in all doing all of that is reading dense philosophy texts. I could get through so much of that and then I would switch to a book that I was reading for my English class and I could plow through some of that and then I would switch back and just like that switching, it, it keeps the mind fresh. Like you're, you're engaging in different – with text in different ways and so like that really helped me be able to get through so many books that I did not enjoy in college, which is that constantly like switching back and forth between books and I even I, – like I still do it now. I read multiple books at a time. I'm currently reading like four books. And I, I like to always be reading a nonfiction book that I kind of just slowly get through. 
I like to be reading a collection of short stories, and I usually have about two books going. One which is usually a part of a series, and then one that's just kind of like for fun, because I want to read it, or I've heard good things about it, and I'm interested. And so that's what I would recommend for you. Like, if you enjoy reading long-running series, sure, read them. But like, be reading another book at the same time, so if you get to a part that you're not that interested in or you don't feel like reading, you will always have that second book that you're reading or that third book that you're reading to fall back on. To like, if you're not feeling this book, well, maybe you'll be feeling one of the other twos, and that will just keep you reading, keep you engaged. Switch back and forth between what you feel the most interested in reading in that moment, right? Like, maybe you you think like, oh, you know what? You wake up and, you know what? I don't feel like reading The Witcher today. You know, I just, I'm not feeling it. That's fine. But don't let that be your excuse for not picking up a book that day. If you're reading multiple books at the same time, you could switch to a book that you are in the middle of and interested in finding out what happens next. So read that one. I, again, if it's something that you can handle, I know some people, like my fiance, for example, cannot read multiple books at a time. They get the characters and like events mixed up and confused in what happened in what book. I totally get that. But if it's something that you can do, I highly recommend reading multiple books at a time. And it also, the more you do it, the better you will be at it. So like, yeah, at first you probably will be mixing up events and characters and misplacing where things happen. But eventually like you'll get pretty good at it and you can keep things straight. But that just comes with practice and with reading more and more and more. My fifth tip, which is a cheat, which is to read short stories. I will, I'll even throw in there like comics as well. Read, just read something shorter. If you feel like you're on the verge of a slump, read a short book. Read a graphic novel. Read a short story. Something that you can finish in like one sitting that will give you that kind of like momentum that you need to move forward in the book that you are reading, right? Something that like you can sit down and you can just read all the way through and you'll be like, okay, I read today, I finished something, tomorrow I'll, I'll go back to that book. Or maybe you need a few days of just a short story or a graphic novel a day, like just something to keep the gears turning that allows you to take somewhat of a break without just stopping completely. And that's kind of a cheat because I just made a whole video about why you should read short stories and I made a video last week about why you should read comics, but keep those things in mind. And I think lastly, what I would say to you is to have a TBR pile. Let me rephrase that. Have a manageable TBR pile. So if you are someone who just started reading again this year and you finish a book, and you're like, wow, that was really great. I, I enjoyed reading that. Uh, what am I going to read next? Don't let that question be what prevents you from reading something. Not the, I don't know what to read next, so I just, I just didn't read anything. That's what we're trying to avoid. If you have a small TBR pile, I would say no more than like 10 books of like that you just have and you're like, I would like to get to all of these sometime soon. And you finish something and you can look. Whatever one speaks to you the most, pick that one up and just get started right away on a new book. Don't let time lapse unless... It's a real like heavy hitting book that you need to dwell on and think about. But even still, you can do that while reading a new book. And I say, don't let it get out of control because technically, all of this is a TBR pile. I have read maybe 20% of the books that I own. I'm trying to get better about that, but it's probably never going to happen. And so all of these I would like to read at some point. That's why I bought them. But my actual TBR pile is a lot smaller. It has like six books in it currently of like, these are just things I would like to get to when I finish what I'm reading. And I think that also, having that little pile staring you in the face day after day after day is the little kick in the butt you might need to like get moving and keep reading. So those are the tips I have for you to do about how to avoid reading slumps. Even if you follow all these perfectly, it's probably going to happen. It's just, it's a natural thing. Don't get discouraged. You will pick up a book again if it's something you truly love doing. Just, if you're in the middle of one, just be conscious of it. Just, hey, I'm in a reading slump. I need to take a week, but next week I'm back. Next week I'm reading again. And, hey, follow these tips, and hopefully that happens to you less and less. That is all I have for you today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. If you are new to the channel, like, share subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. And until next time, thank you for watching. Keep reading good books.